Hey, this is Jimmy, and I just wanted to take a moment today to talk about calling. As a former Bible college and seminary student, I've thought probably about calling more than the average person has. I've thought about a lot about purpose and ministry and all sorts of uh, kind of esoteric dreams uh, regarding my own life and what God had put me on this world to do. I had even taken some very dramatic actions in my own life um, to, to walk in that sense of calling, to sure that up. Uh, and to, to put myself in footing to one day perhaps walk out that calling. Um, but here I am, uh, so many years removed from Bible college and seminary, and I currently work as a mortgage underwriter at one large national bank uh, in this country. And it's not something I train to do. It's not something I aspire to do. Nobody in their right mind, except for one person I know, ever thought, I want to be a mortgage underwriter when I grow up. I didn't go around wearing J.P. Morgan as a name tag as a child and think, I want to work at a bank. Uh, you know, like most people that I know that work in the mortgage underwriting business, uh, working in a bank is something that kind of just happened to them. Um, it was kind of a re result of circumstances in life. And, you know, it turns out to be, uh, at the end of the day, a pretty sweet gig. It allows me to live a rather comfortable middle class lifestyle. I can pay my bills, I can enjoy some creature comforts, and I can, generally speaking, have a good time. But if you would have asked me when I was back in Bible college, um, 10, 15 years ago in seminary, what are you going to be doing 10 or 15 years from now? I would have had no earthly idea that I was going to be working at a bank. I would have thought I would have been in some sort of full-time vocational occupational ministry. But things didn't work out that way. And while there's a number of reasons as to how I got from um, from where I was 10 or 15 years ago to where I am today, uh, I don't need to go into all that. But, you know, needless to say, it's something that has weighed on my heart all these years. You know, I can look back and sit there and think, well, have I, have I missed my calling? Did I, did I sidestep it? Did I get derailed? Did I do something wrong? Is, is, is something, def you know, did I, what, 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 what wrong that, that I'm not doing what I once dreamed about? And, you know, that's true not only for me, but I think that's true for a lot of people. Because truth is, a lot of people want, had dreams of doing things when they went to college and they ended up in vocations that, that had nothing to do with what they trained for. Um, so I think, you know, you can relate to me even if you didn't go to Bible college or seminary. And, the, you know, a lot of disappointment can set in as a result. And, you know, people eventually sometimes experience midlife crises because they grew up and they did become what they wanted to be. Um, and, you know, while there's definitely a process of things you need to look at in your life and say, well, how did I get from point A to point B? And, and you know, what needs to be my next step? Maybe I need to make a course direction. I think there's a sense in which we need to all step back from the obsession we have with dreams and callings and purpose and vocation. Um, because I think we often confuse um, what it is that God has put us on this earth to do. Uh, first and foremost, I think that well, we need to, to, to change the way we see and think about things. Um, because if we look at our lives primarily in sense of, uh, of occupation and calling and duty and what God put us on this planet for um, as, as defining what we do between 9 and 5, well, a lot of us are going to be disheartened and brokenhearted. And a lot of us are not going to be where we thought God would have us to be. Um, and that could totally mess up your life. And I think the only way we can correct that that train wreck of a thought uh, is we need to, to step back and look to see what God has truly put us on this world for. And our, our purpose and calling in life is not primarily that of occupation and purpose and ministry or being an artist or what have you. Rather, the primary purpose and calling that God has placed on our lives is first and foremost, he has called us to be saints. He has called us to be people who follow after his heart and who look to live out the life that Christ would have us to live in our daily lives and our walk um, and how we interact with people, how we do our jobs, um, how we behave, and all those sort of things as we advance the kingdom of God simply as living out our lives as simple and humble saints uh, who wish to do nothing more than follow him. Second, um, after that, I think um, when it comes to occupation, I think we need to really, instead of thinking of occupation as some sort of dream and purpose and thing that has God put in our heart, you know, we may end up doing things uh, that don't really have any real sense of purpose about them in our daily lives. Um, it's just part of our uh, way that we put food on our table. 
And I think after seeing ourselves as saints, we need to see ourselves as individuals whom God has put um, to provide and take care of our family and those around us. And we need to work not only uh, to further ourselves as saints, but we need to work to further ourselves um, so that we can better take care of our family, our wives, our children, um, our neighbors, um, and those around us so that we can do good as, as much as possible. Um, and we need to think primarily about those two things first and foremost. And then after then, you know, then we can talk about thirdly, uh, purpose, occupation, um, callings, giftings, talents, and abilities. But the gifting, callings, talents, and abilities that we have, the unique purposes by which we might speculate that God put us here on this world for, you know, they really need to come out of the first two. Our calling as saints and our calling as individuals who have been called to take care of our families, to provide for others, and to work for not only our benefit, uh, but their benefit as well. Um, and from that, we can exercise our gifts and callings and ministries. Um, but you know what? I think at the end of the day, when it comes to those things, we need to, uh, on that third thing, we need to be really flexible. Because at the end of the day, you know, we may have a, a, something beating wildly in our heart, but we, we think God has put us for it. And we, we might think we have some big dream and vision and, and thing that we want God to do. But you know, you, at the end of the day, you really don't know why you're here and what God has truly called you to do as an individual. Um, and I think it almost becomes arrogant and presumptuous of us to presume that he has called us to do one specific task and our life is going to be defined by that specific task. You know, if you were to look at most of the ministers in the Bible, that wasn't actually what happened in their own lives. Um, they might have short sporadic outburst of ministry uh, like the prophet Obadiah who has one chapter in the Bible yet is defined as being a prophet um, yet you know most of his life would have been as a normal family man or even look at Christ even in his ministry he spent 30 of his years of his life not doing ministry same with John the Baptist same with most of the the apostles and all who have followed since um, so instead of feeling disappointment in our lives or constantly looking to advance this sort of aggressive feeling that we have about needing to preach full time and, and to study full time and, and, and do all those things, um, instead of focusing on what we need to do to fulfill ourselves and what God has put us here for, let us simply focus on the first two things, uh, to live our lives as saints and to provide for our family and those around us. You know, I think if we look to do that, then whatever number three is, calling, purpose, ministry, goals, you know, those sort of things, all of those will simply work out in time in themselves as God's hand rests sovereignly and supernaturally on our life to fulfill his purpose. And we may discover when we get to heaven one day that our purpose wasn't in anything to do with a platform or being a scholar or theologian or a pastor or any of those sort of things. Our calling could have been something totally unrelated to that and we may have been here for one purpose one purpose only and that is to do some little thing that we totally even forgotten about just as the saints that we read about in matthew 25 who who took care of individuals and when they faced the lord on judgment day they were like lord when did we see you naked lord when did we feed you lord when did we clothe you lord when did we visit you whatever they did in their lives they didn't even remember at the end of the day yet they fulfilled the purpose and calling for which god had put them here to begin with, and they didn't even know it. Um, and I think that's how life works out for most of us. Now, some of us may obtain vocational, occupational, full-time ministry, and that's cool if that's what happens for you. Um, but if you don't, don't feel disappointed. Don't feel like you've wasted your life or that somehow you went derailed or, or something didn't work out right. Um, instead, sit there and think, you know, what can I do to, to make myself a better saint? And what can I do to make myself uh, a better father, husband, uh, neighbor, friend, brother, cousin? Uh, what, what can I do to fulfill those things? Because if you take care of those first two things, I think at the end of the day when you get to heaven, uh, and when the Lord judges all of us, he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. And you will have done a thousand and one things and served a thousand and one purposes that you never even imagined or thought uh, that for which God had put you here. Um, and <laughs> I think we'll just get a good laugh out of the end of the day. And it'll take a lot of the stress that we have out of wondering if we're in the perfect will of God and if we're doing the thing that he put us here for. So hey, everybody, this is Jimmy Humphrey. 
former Bible college seminary student who became a mortgage underwriter, not an occupational ministry, not even a volunteer, currently actively uh, doing ministry in a church. But I'm just living out my life, sharing my faith uh, whenever possible, looking to be a good saint, looking to be a good husband, and looking to be a good son. Have a good day.